Hello Unity fans and welcome back to the series. We are currently covering a sort of sub-series that brings buildings into the game properly. In the previous video, we've taken a look at how a central task queuing system can be the link between buildings, units and actions. I've also already done a lot of work on the progressive construction of both simple and complex buildings. But before I present that, there's some groundwork that has to be completed first. Today's video covers a topic that may not seem flashy and can even go all but unnoticed for the most part. It can also be difficult to understand, but it's extremely powerful when used in the correct circumstances, and quite satisfying if you can get it to work correctly. That topic is recursion. Today I will present a quick example of using recursion to determine the optimal or least amount of groundwork that has to be done to prepare the terrain for actually constructing structures on it. Recursion is a complex topic with many considerations I won't even mention here. We'll only consider a very specific, easy case that is perfect for what we'd like to apply it to. To give you a feel for recursion, you can go to Google and search for the word. It will give you a definition, but also ask, did you mean recursion? As if you typed it incorrectly. If you click on that suggestion, it repeats the exact same search, with the same result, and even asks you again if you meant recursion. It's one of those cute little jokes Google is famous for and it shows how recursion is basically some function calling itself over and over. Here's another example. If you have not heard this sentence before, go repeat it to any five people you know and who have also not heard it before. That seems quite easy, until you realize that each of those five people now need to do the same using the same sentence. And each of the people they repeat the sentence to have to do the same, and so on. When you start thinking deeper about it, you will find practical examples of many of the complexities that recursion has to deal with. For example, eventually some of the five people a certain person selects would have already heard it, and is therefore out of bounds. And how do you know whether I actually started this chain? Somebody may have repeated that sentence to me, and I may just be passing it on. Can you see how quickly it gets more complicated? But let's consider a simple practical example we can use to prepare the terrain of our map for our buildings. In a previous video, which I'll link to in the top right, we've already covered how the terrain needs to be manipulated in order to ensure that units would be able to find paths to and through their building sites. At that time, we merely flattened all the required hexes that the building would be placed on automatically. But that isn't a very satisfying mechanic. And it means that your map, in which you've gone to great lengths to include varying elevation, would mostly be leveled out as you expand, especially the larger the buildings get. A better way would be to flatten out the ground just enough for the building to fit nicely in between the possible elevation differences. Let's look at some examples. If a very small building takes up only one hex, all that's really important is that a unit can reach that hex. So the elevation of the hexes immediately surrounding that building should not be more than one lower or higher than that hex, assuming that from there onwards there would be some viable path. But buildings could be larger. If a structure overlaps with more than one hex, we need to force those hexes onto the same level. Here we have to force three hexes onto the same level, and we require the fourth hex indicated to be at most one elevation level lower or higher, so that units could reach the building over it. When we get to more complex buildings, like the farm, certain different parts of the building may have to comply to different sets of rules. Here, each of the outbuildings need two hexes to be on the same level, and we require the elevation difference of the surrounding hexes to be at most one level, since the farmer needs to be able to reach those hexes, on which he will plant these crops. And as with the smaller buildings, some of the hexes need to be not too low and not too high, since the units would need to be able to reach the house and other buildings. But we don't actually need the entire floor plan to be completely flat. So, given a certain floor plan, how do we know which combination of lowering and raising of hexes is the cheapest option, as in requires the least amount of digging and groundwork to accomplish? In the limit, 
You could raise or lower everything to the same level, which is equivalent to how we just automatically flattened everything before, but that would be a lot of unnecessary work. The solution is to recursively define a set of rules for each building floor plan. Let's take the simple building on three hexes. We limit the number of elevation levels a hex can be lowered or raised, since the adjustment our builders can make to the terrain needs to be limited. We're going to limit this to one level either way, although the method can handle any value. So in this case, the hex with the campfire is our base hex. We specify that we are allowed to raise or lower it by one elevation level from its current level. Next, we specify that the opposite hex needs to be on the same level the base hex is on, whatever that is during the search algorithm. We can now either specify the hex to the right in terms of the base hex, which we do here, or we could have specified it in terms of the opposite hex to form a chain of rules. Finally, the hex to the left is allowed to be one elevation level lower or higher than the base hex. Now, we can easily see that we could either lower the opposite hex and the one to the right, or we could raise the base hex to ensure that those three are on the same level. For the first option, the hex to the left is still okay. But if we raise the base hex, we need to raise the hex to the left as well, so that it doesn't end up at two levels lower than the base hex. We do have to be careful to not loop back to a previous hex from one of its chains since that would cause an infinite loop. But all in all, that wasn't too difficult. But how do we write a method that can give us those answers for any set of rules? Well, our solution is to start at the base hex and try all the possible adjustments to it. In this case, lowering it, raising it, or keeping it at its current level. Then, for each of those options, go to each of the hexes specified in the rule set and do the same. Now, each of those hexes could have another set of hexes with rules linked to it. But you keep recursively doing this until you've covered the entire chain, or rather tree, and all of the options. For each of these, you need to store which are viable options, and then pick the cheapest one of the viable options. It sounds like a lot of work, but recursion makes it deceptively easy. This short piece of code contains the entire optimization method. I'm not going to go into each statement in detail, but will quickly indicate where each step happens. Let me know in the comments if you have questions on the detail. Also, I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to try to adjust this to your situation. We start off with an empty current optimal solution and an empty current path or selection of actions. This if statement references a method that just tests whether the cell is okay to build on. For example, there may already be a building on it, a unit may be in the way, or any other state that prevents it from being built upon can be tested here. Then, for the current hex being tested, we loop through all the allowed options, either lowering it, raising it, or keeping it as is. Then, for each of the hexes that has a rule linked to this hex, we apply the same adjustment to the allowed elevations, since if we lowered this hex, the allowed elevations of the hexes linked to it also need to be lowered. You'll see that the method then recursively calls itself on each of these hexes, which is where the power of recursion shines. Each hex with a rule linked to the current hex in turn starts the same procedure from scratch, applying it to each of its own hexes with rules linked to it, which also starts the same procedure for all of its hexes, etc. And each of these recursive subpaths creates possible versions of part of an answer, and an optimal subpath for that recursive part, by constantly comparing these subpaths to the current optimal subpath in terms of how many digging actions are required to affect the chain of adjustments. Chaining all the optimal subpaths together and working back to the starting point leaves us with the overall optimal path. Next, we could loop through the different possible directions of placing the building and pick the direction that leads to the overall optimal path. Or we could allow the player to manually pick the direction and then only optimize for that direction, like we do here. You may be wondering how much computing time this takes up, but as long as the number of hexes involved is quite low, these computations are actually a drop in the bucket. It only needs to run once every time a new segment is selected, 
but even running it on every single frame leads to a negligible drop in frame rate. Moving on to the more complex example of the farm, all we need to do is specify the more complex set of rules, and the optimization method works exactly as before. In this example, there are many more rules between different hexes, and they are not all linked simply to the base hex, which means they form a proper recursive tree this time. But as long as the branches of the tree don't loop back onto themselves or onto other branches, the optimal solution is found no matter how many hexes are involved in the floor plan. This means we can still have the variety of elevation on the piece of land the farm is built on, as long as we flatten out a few important ones to make building placement and unit bathing still work. This option leads to a more pleasing map since it does not require so much of the map to become flattened out and monotone over time. It also gives us complete freedom over the floor plans of our buildings. In the next video, we'll see how we get the builders to construct both simple and complex buildings progressively, which is so much more satisfying than just having the building suddenly appear. Please consider subscribing to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!